Year after year, we see buildings being torn down to make way for bigger and better, newer and more modern ones than those that came before. The biggest cities in the world used to tear down what would now be considered historically significant sites. After almost losing Grand Central Station, New Yorkers petitioned to keep buildings of a certain age and significance from being taken down. Instead, these buildings' tenants are new, but the original architecture, structure, and integrity of the building remains. Something quite similar is happening right here in Bloomington, Indiana. Buildings that once might have been torn down are now renovated while still upholding their unique character. The most recent addition to this distinguished list of renovations is the Odd Fellows Building, once used as a local hardware store, a bakery, and even a local branch of an international fraternal society. This historic landmark has become beautiful apartments and a home to a new restaurant in the heart of downtown Bloomington. It's an interesting story. Right in the front of the entrance of the Odd Fellows Building is a limestone plaque and it says the Odd Fellows Building. Well, we have pictures from the 1920s, and, and they say uh, Henry and Kerr Building. The building had been called the Henry and Kerr Building since its construction in 1913, and that in 1929, when the Oddfellows um, bought the building, they changed the name. I don't really consider myself a modernist in the sense that I insist on the change, but let's face it, uh, if we want to use these buildings, we're going to we're going to One thing I really liked about this project is that the, the owner took all of the incentives available to him and it, I think, got him more and more excited about the project and uh, it, it kind of, this one went like clockwork. Okay, so here in the hallways, we're kind of saddled with these steel beams and columns that you'll see up above and the columns here. And these are all original, the floors here are original, this hallway is original. And as we walk down here, you'll see the original windows that used to serve as the fronts of offices from when the building was built in the early 1900s. I first got into this business uh, personally, actually on February 18th of 1978, when I was 17 years old and working for minimum wage at Blocks at the College Mall, and my oldest brother Barney sold me my first house, which I bought, uh, which we still own, and after buying that house, it's just been a very passionate uh, hobby for me to buy and renovate or buy and build real estate. What's an odd fellow, do you know? Alexa, what's an odd fellow? We're seeing suddenly a lot of activity among property owners, um, a lot of interest in historic preservation rather than just remodeling. And the Oddfellows building was one of our most significant buildings downtown. It's an arts and crafts building and basically we're known for Victorian retail storefronts. So Oddfellows is one of two arts and crafts style buildings that we have. It also has um, in a limestone capital, you know, we have uh, glazed brick which is a lot different and kind of a unique material. There's been a used clothing store there, kind of a uh, yeah, used clothing store and a number of uses on the, on the main floor. There was a hardware store for a long time. In the last 20 or 30 years, there have been two um, retail storefronts on the first floor. And of course, the Oddfellows were upstairs in, the, in the, all the third floor and most of the second floor. So there were, I think there were only two or three tenants on the second floor besides Oddfellows in, uh, over the last, say, 20 well, since 1929. That one, the Belgian crepes and waffles, you'll be able to walk up to and buy from the window out of the alley. There. Yeah, they'll make them right in the window. Oh, okay. So when people walk by, they'll see somebody cooking oh, wow. crepes and waffles in the window. Um, There's an opening, Tony. Totally. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> All right. You need a crepe maker. I've decided to come back to uh, my hometown to get back in touch with my roots and do a restaurant here that I can share all of the experience I've had over the past 25 years of cooking in Europe and in New York City and in the Caribbean. Okay. The building owner, in order to preserve the property intact, uh, 
will have to go through the Historic Commission for each change to the property. Because of that, they were required to go through demolition delay. So they presented um, their plans for the building to the Historic Commission. As it was, everybody was very enthusiastic about the owner's plans and the construction is proceeding. All of that hardware is going to be painted the same color as the walls that the historic preservationist consultant wouldn't let us bury them in the walls. So uh, that's what we had to do. There you go. And that, that really saves a lot for them, right? Yeah, that, that's going to do it right, right. there. I mean, without, without the wall. Um, all of the light fixtures that were on the third floor have been incorporated into the design of the building on the second, third floor. These are the lights up here that used to hang in the Oddfellas Fraternal Hall, and these were all on this floor, sprinkled around. This whole area of the building was one big fraternal hall for the Oddfellas, and we were able to use a lot of the old features and elements of their space. Some of the specific things um, that make the historic project a little more difficult is you are working with materials that were installed, you know, 80, 100 years ago. You see that doorway right there? This craftsman showed me a doorway he had stripped of its original wood, only to piece it all back together in different locations to make door frames and entryways. These workers were careful when handling each piece of native 1912 lumber, noting the importance of maintaining the original integrity of the building. Although they mostly handled each aspect of the building with utmost care, some pieces were unsalvageable and left as rubble. This was the perfect synthesis of a great building getting into the hands of the right developer with the right contractor and the perfect tenant mix. The beautiful part about it is that we were able to use the existing architecture and infrastructure that we already had and come up with uses and economic uses that are viable for us today.
Yeah. This is the elevator shaft I was talking about, how they were going to cover over the ceiling. And now you've got a 21-foot ceiling. From the old Oddfellows fraternity ceremony cloak closet turned hallway to the ancient entrances reformed into bedroom walls, this building is anything but ordinary. Each room has a completely different layout, but each an equally stunning appeal. Every room has its own unique story and special touch that makes it odd in its own way, yet endearing and inviting. To a building so steeped in history, the Oddfellows apartments bring a modern touch with its brand new bathrooms, carpeting, and state-of-the-art kitchen appliances. We have big windows and it's, it's really light in the apartment. And you know, most of the times in the new buildings, you, you will not get that. It's cool to be in a historic building. You just got to understand and accept that you're going to have a book of challenges, whatever those are. And when you look at this building, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. It's a historic building. It has the charm. It has the glazed brick. It has very large windows. The building has a tremendous presence on Kirkwood, and that presence needed to be restored. It's also about the location. It's right there on Kirkwood. Everybody passes it. I think that Kirkwood is the Champs-Élysées of Bloomington, and you know I want to be everyone's favorite little bistro um, on the corner there next to the Chumley Theater. What I think it brings to the community is a connection with the, a, not a, even a sense of the past, a connection with the community, a feeling that we're all, we're, we're all a part of this and we all have some ownership with it. And I think more than new buildings, the historic buildings produce that connection with citizens. You know, the Oddfellows building is a great example for an entrepreneur, a financial institution, and a great community coming together and making a vision for the future and what we can do with what the past has given us and what we can lend to the future. This is what makes Bloomington unique and special and this is why our downtown is vital and important to this community and always will be. The Oddfellows began as a union for workers whose professions were so unique that they had no place else to turn for support. These odd fellows banded together and helped their community and each other. Today, the building stands as a testament to Bloomington's rich history and proof that with hard work, creative vision, and a little nostalgia, we can preserve time and space while still making progress towards a bright future. Yeah. <laughs>